Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it clinical examination speaking, can we begin? Yes, um, I, want to start, I will want to start my examination by washing my hands and introduce myself to the patient. Then I would confirm his name and date of birth. Once I've uh, done this, then I would want to explain what I want to do to him. I'll tell him I'm here today to examine his, by both of his hips. And I'll be doing this by watching him walk to look at both hips, to feel both hips and also assess uh, the movements of his hip. Then I would want to obtain a verbal consent. Once I've obtained that, then I need him to <clears throat> have just his boxer shorts on and he could also have a, a t-shirt with it. Then my examination will start by <clears throat> um, inspection. I would want him to stand and while he's standing, I'll inspect, I'll watch his, if there's any form of, uh, before he walks, I'll look at his uh, pelvis. If there's any tilt, he could have a trendeler bug. There could be a pelvic uh, tilt, which would uh, give me, which would help me in uh, making a diagnosis. Then after I've done that, I would also want to look at the bulk of all his muscles anteriorly, posteriorly, and laterally. I'll look if there's any form of asymmetry in both uh, hips. Once I've done this, then I would want him to walk if, uh, and I would also offer him support uh, if he's having difficulty in walking. I would look around if there are any walking aids too. I'll take note of that. He could have a, a Trendelenburg gait, which would be, uh, there could be a tilt on the contralateral side and that's on the left side since he's having uh, pain on the right. So once I've done this, then my next, uh, then I would want to watch if there's any form of scar any obvious swelling, which he, will, which he, he might have on the right side. If there's any form of deformity. And once, and once I've done this, then I would want him to lie down. I want him to lie supine. Then I'll start, uh, I'll ask him if he's having any pain before I go ahead. Once I've uh, confirmed that, then I'll feel for, I'll assess the temperature of uh, both limbs starting from the, uh, starting from the hip. And also I'll assess for any form of a tenderness. I would assess if there's any form of a fusion. Then I would also want to palpate the hips. I'll palpate all the, uh, the both hip joints. I'll start all my examinations with the uh, normal side. So once I've uh, done this, I also want to assess the femoral pulse. I would test both pulses uh, bilaterally. And I also look if there's any form of radio femoral delay. Once I've uh, done this, the next will be, I would want to um, now measure, I want, I want to assess for a leg, uh, leg length discrepancy. So I'll do this by doing the actual, uh, the um, apparent and the actual uh, length, which I could do. Um, the actual is usually measured from the anterior superior iliac spine to the uh, pubic uh, tobacco. The, uh, to the tibial, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, medial malleolus. So while the apparent is usually from the umbilicus, the real length and the apparent, while the uh, apparent is from the umbilicus or cephistanum to the medial malleolus. Once I've done this, I'll take note of all dimensions. Then my next test will be, which I will explain to you, will be the Thomas test. I'll start with the uh, normal side. I'll first of all, I'll let him lie supine flat. Then he will flex uh, the uh, opposite limb. I will, I, will, I will ensure that there's no lumbar lordosis and see if there's a to assess for any fixed flexor uh, deformity. So once I've uh, done this, the next will then be all the range of movements. I want to do it actively and passively. I'll tell him to move. I'll describe what he's going to do. Flexion of the hip and also uh, extension of the hip abduction, abduction, then I also do them passively to assess the range of movement, if there's any stiffness, if there's any pain. And I also want to watch, I want him to flex and see and do a, a Galeazzi test, if there's any discrepancy in the length. Once there's a discrepancy, then I will now measure, I will measure from the trochanteric to the uh, tibial tobacco to see if there's any, to know where 
the uh, disparity is. If there's any uh, disparity, it might be a sopratocanteric uh, um, uh, etiology. So once I've uh, done this, then I would want to uh, thank him. I'll wash my hands and I would want to complete my examination by doing a, uh, a knee exam, a spine examination, and also a full neurovascular examination of the hip. And I would offer him assistance to dress him up. And I'll summarize my patient. Yes, you can. So in summary, I've uh, examined a 66-year-old man that presents with uh, a right hip pain. He has a trendelenburg gait with the right side being affected and a tilt on the left. There are no erythema, no changes in the skin, no um, obvious <clears throat> anomaly. There is an obvious asymmetry. The right hip is uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, appears uh, swollen and there are no scars uh, around the both hips. There, the, there's temperature, there's a... Um, the the right the right hip is warm to touch. There are no effusions, and there's also a leg length discrepancy on the right, which is sopratocanteric in origin. Thomas's test is uh, negative, and also he has a difficulty in making some movements because of the pain on the right hip. So, what so are your differential diagnosis for this patient? My differential diagnosis is um, a right uh, hip uh, osteoarthritis is my first, and it could also have uh, a right um, sciatic nerve injury. But I don't okay, expect this to have, okay. it could also How? have a yes. pseudo gout, rheumatic arthritis of the right hip. It could have a gouty arthritis and uh, yes. All right, what investigations would you carry out to confirm your diagnosis? Okay, so, uh, I want to do an X-ray of the, <clears throat> of the right, uh, of, the, of both hip, joints and also uh, of the back and the knee. Uh, then I also do a, a magnetic resonance imaging of both hips of the pelvic, of the pelvic uh, bone in yes. essence. What are the treatment options that you can offer to this patient? Yeah, the, the treatment options are, I could do uh, for the osteoarthritis non-operative. So we need some uh, reduction in weight, exercise, physiotherapy, physiotherapy and occupational therapy and also it could benefit from uh, uh, the analgesia, analgesics and in some cases one it could also benefit from injection of steroids before thinking of any form of invasive treatment because it might also benefit from uh, uh, an hemiatroplasty. Yes, okay, did you, uh, good. Uh, in it was good. Uh, did you ask the patient or did you do the passive movements? Yes, I did passive and active. Active I first do, and then passive. Yes, okay. active first. Then I did passive to check for the range of movements and also assess if there are if there are any form of stiffness, crepitus, and yeah. I okay, good. That. Then it was all covered. Yes. Thank you.